What's up guys? We're in the woods today. Uh, we're running pumps, dumping sap on the ground just to flush out the sap lines, get the wood shavings out of them, uh, get ready for our collection when the sap starts running really well. But even though it's not running really superb today, I can tell by the vacuum readings on the gauge that there's a leak somewhere. So I want to take a minute and just illustrate how we find a leak and uh, how we know there's a leak. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, here we are looking at a line that uh, it may have a tiny leak, but nothing, nothing too great. And what I want you to see is the speed at which these bubbles and this sap is moving through this line. Okay, you got that? Kind of remember what that looks like. And uh, I'll go show you the line that has the leak on it and you can compare. All right, now here's the line that I think has a leak on it. It's gonna be quick. You see that? See those bubbles rushing through there? Boom, just zipping right along. If that sap is moving that quick in the line, it's because somewhere upstream here, wow, look at that, there is a leak. So uh, time to put the hiking boots on, walk this line, see if we can find it. Okay, I think I have found the culprit. Right here on the side of this tree, you can see this T, and this runs up to our spile where we're collecting the sap. But right upstream of that, it's actually pretty loud. Uh, I'll focus in on it. Right there's our leak. I'm sure you can probably hear that. Probably a chew right there since it lays against the tree. A, a mouse or a squirrel has climbed up here and gnawed on it. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we need to fix that. We've got our rope tool hooked on to give us some slack to work with. I think I showed you this last year, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut. Well, actually, I think I'll just cut on this side, shorten it up, and uh, cut this bad piece out from here to here and reconnect it. That should, that should take care of the problem. All right, here is a shot after I have fixed the leak. And you can tell that it has slowed it down considerably, but it's still moving right along. I wouldn't be surprised if what there's not another leak um, on further down the line. So I'm going to keep walking and listening. Well, I've walked all the way to the end of this line where the anchor tree is. And you can see the speed that those bubbles are moving up here. Kind of like a, like a freight train, a line of freight cars. But they're moving really slow. And that's because there's only one tree feeding sap into this line. This is, this is the end tree. So uh, that's okay. There are gases that build up in the tree, uh, especially early on. We're going to pull those out too. So that's, that's part of it. But uh, most importantly, I don't think we have any other leaks. So that's good news. Uh, we saw what the train of bubbles look like when there was just one tree on the line. I've moved on further down toward the sugar house and this is what it looks like when there are five trees on the line. So I've passed four other trees. I got to this point and you can see those bubbles are further apart. As we move down the line and, and sap replaces the volume in the tubing, uh, displaces the air that's in it or the gases that are in it, the bubbles get further and further apart. So uh, that's pretty awesome. So there it is. That is how we locate and fix leaks in a maple sap tubing collection system. That was a pretty easy one. Um, they'll get a lot more difficult as the season goes on. See you next time.